Hi guys, hope you're doing well. I really hope my last video helped you understand how you can change for the better too. How you're not stuck at one place and your decisions today can make your future the way you want it to be. So if you haven't watched that video yet, click on the link above or in the description below. Um, in this video, I want to help you understand how you make decisions. This will be more like a two-part video. Um, after watching the second part, the puzzle will sort of fit together. Now, as I said in my first video, I understood that I can change. But whenever I started thinking about the change, I got scared. For example, I wanted to start a company. Um, remember, I, was, I told you I was really ambitious. But then the first thought that came to my mind was 90% of the startups fail. Second thought, how will I get the money for it? Um, your brain will always try to scare you. Um, it's happy in its comfort zone. It's designed that way. It's designed to protect you. So the minute you hesitate, it will give you 10,000 different excuses to not do that one thing you're scared of. So I wanted to understand why this happens and what can I do about it? How do I make that decision and how do I follow through? Um, so what I found out was our brains are composed of multiple competing networks, each of which has its own goals, own desires. For example, when you're deciding to have an ice cream, some networks would want the sugar. The other networks will vote against it. And there'll be some networks that will um, perhaps suggest that you can have the ice cream now um, if you go to the gym tomorrow. So you can say the brain is um, like a parliament composed of rival parties which are fighting together, which are fighting against each other to steer the ship. Um, sometimes you'll decide selfishly, sometimes impulsively, sometimes generously and sometimes with the long view in mind. Uh, imagine this, imagine you are making a simple choice, standing in front of a yogurt, frozen yogurt store, trying to decide between the two flavors you like equally. Say these flavors are chocolate and vanilla. From the outside it doesn't look like you're doing much, you're simply looking at the two flavors. But inside, your brain with the simple choice, it unlocks an enormous amount of activity between the neurons. In this web of neurons, a particular set will represent chocolate flavor. Um, these neurons can be located in different parts of the brain involving smell, taste, vision, or any unique memory you have related to chocolate. These new neurons active collectively um, that's chocolate for your brain. So all those neurons in the different parts of your brain that become active when you're thinking of chocolate, that's chocolate for your brain. Right? Similarly, same thing goes for vanilla. You'll have a set of neurons in different parts of your brain that will represent vanilla for you. So chocolate group of neurons and vanilla group of neurons will fight it out until one of them wins. This winning network will define what you do next. So as a result of ongoing conflict in this brain, we can, we can argue with ourselves. Um, it's all you, but different parts of you. You must have noticed, um, at least sometime in your life, that you were sort of arguing with yourself about a decision you want to make or don't want to make. Um, I can show you the obvious, uh, how obvious these conflicts can become. Um, in this test in front of you, all you have to do is name the color of the ink in which each of these words are printed. You can pause the video to try out the test if you'd like. Difficult, right? All you want to do is read the word. Um, it's because one network in your brain takes on a task of identifying the color and putting a name to it. At the same time, the competing networks are responsible for reading the words. You can feel the struggle as these systems fight with each other. And to get the right answer, you'll have to suppress the strong impulse to read the word. 
um, in difference to concentrating on the ink color. You can, you can experience this conflict. So there's one more factor that helps with the decision making and that factor is emotions. Um, in most situations, physiological signals are more subtle and so we tend to be unaware of them. However, these signals are crucial in directing the decisions we have to make. Um, take the choice of uh, what kind of drink you want to buy. For example, you go to a shopping center, you go to a store and you want to pick up a drink. And you're thinking between two choices. Now, there's too much data for you to deal with between drink A and drink B. Um, data like calories, sugar, taste, packaging and so on. If you're a robot, you'd be stuck there all day trying to make that decision with no obvious way to trade off which details matter more. Um, and that's what the feedback from your body is able to give you. For example, um, thinking about your budget might make your palms sweat or you might salivate thinking about the last time you consumed that drink. You simulate your experience with one drink and then the other. Um, the bodily experience that helps your brain to quickly place a value on drink A and then drink B. Um, so basically you're not just extracting the data, you feel the data. So, yeah, so each decision involves our past experiences as well as the present situations. But there's one more part to it, um, predictions about the future. Right? So the last factor that helps you make a decision is the future. All across the animal kingdom, every creature is wired to seek reward. Uh, the challenge with any reward is that choices typically don't yield their fruit right away. Um, we almost always have to make decisions in which choose chosen course of action return rewards at a later time. Uh, for example, people go to school e for years um, because they value the future concept of having a degree. They go through employment they don't enjoy with future hope of a promotion. Um, they push themselves through exercise with the goal of being fit. Traveling to the future is what your brain does constantly. We can always disconnect from the present moment and travel to the world that doesn't exist yet. Um, simulating a scenario in your head is just the first step. For example, when I wanted to start a company, I knew it's not going to be easy. There will be a lot of failures and it's going to be very hard just starting the company. But I would constantly, constantly think about how when the company is established, I would buy this particular car or how I'll wear nice suits to work, how I'll stay busy and create something that people would want to buy, how it will be such an exciting experience building that company from the ground up. Thinking about these rewards made me want to start my own company. Now, to decide between the imagined scenarios, let's say you have two different scenarios, and to decide between the imagine, those imagined scenarios, you will try to estimate the reward in these potential scenarios, right? So whatever you think is going to give you a bigger reward, you tend to go towards that scenario. So how do you accurately simulate these futures? How can you possibly predict what it'll be like, really like to go down these paths? The answer is you can't. There is no way to know that your predictions will be accurate. All your simulations um, in your head are based on your past experiences and how the world currently works. But there's an interesting twist here. The world is always changing around us. Your valuation of everything around is changeable because our predictions don't match quite often to what actually happens. For example, if you have a prediction about how rewarding the park is going to be. If you run into friend, your friends there and it turns out to be better than you thought it would be, that will raise the value for the next time you make that decision. 
On the other hand, if the swings are broken and it rains, that will lower the value for the next time. So the next time you want to decide, you decide to go to the park, you'll think of whatever happened in the past. So your uh, brain will simulate that scenario for the future, thinking about what happened in the past. I hope that made sense. Um, so you should know when it comes down to taking a decision to improve the aspects of your life that you're not happy with, the brain will always present a competing argument against it. It will involve your past, your future, your emotions. And after I understood this fact, I found out why I am so scared to do anything, especially starting a company. Because I have already failed in the past, I had no money, and if I fail again, I will end up at the same place again. I really hope this video helped you in realizing how your brain reacts when it comes to making decisions. Please like the video and subscribe to my channel so that I can create more content like this. Hit the bell notification icon so that you know when I drop my next video on taking action. Thanks guys. Bye.